So you've run out of room at your six foot picnic table and you need a bigger table. <laughs> Let me show you how to do that. He's got the spirit of a handyman. Well, hey there. In this video, I'm going to show you actually how I build two tables. This one I'm doing in rather quick motion. And then we show you another one in a little more depth. So let's check that out. So I start by trimming some two by threes into two foot sections. These are going to be used as the support pieces underneath the table. We're actually going to screw through those to the underside of the boards. And then I take my uh, handsaw and I put that blade at a 45 degree angle. Actually, I had to use my left hand to cut it. Got a little bit awkward. And um, just cut off the corners so that as people sit up underneath the table, they don't bonk their knee or their leg or whatever. If they do happen to brush against that piece, they hit that nice little rounded corner. And that becomes a much more pleasant experience. An important part of the process is picking out straight wood and then um, getting them to line up so that you can have an easy tabletop. So these five, um, these are two by sixes. Um, I put the print side down. Uh, here's some print. Here's some print. And then um, I put the three straightest boards here in the middle and the warpest one here on the outside. So I'll screw in one side and get those ones evenly spaced. Then I'll come in and push this side together. You can see this board here on the left is kind of bowed out a little bit. So I'm gonna um, screw Dad, it in evenly on off. one side and then force it together on this side and screw it Dad, together. And then across the middle, I can use a pry bar and kind of Dad, make it straight. So I can take my shoes off. Sure. So I've got all the boards lined up nice and straight. And then because this is a 10 foot table, um, I'm gonna put one cleat on the end. Um, so I'm gonna use five cleats across and that's gonna keep this table from warping and gapping. So right now I have all of these boards um, pretty tightly put here and I wanna gap them just a little bit. So I'm gonna start here in the middle and I'm just gonna put them a screw width apart. This is about a quarter inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and make these spacers. You could use actual spacers too if you're feeling real fancy. So four little spacers. I mean that one crazy. All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and attach this piece of wood, and uh, I'll use some gorilla glue on the bottom side. Glue that down. Screw it down. Um, one screw on either side of the board. And that will, if there is any bowing, that's going to short up so it's tight against this piece of wood. And then the Gorilla Glue is going to create a nice adhesion so that the longevity of this uh, table will stay truly straight and flat and won't work. So here you can see the board is, um, you know, I've attached the first board. And then this board is uh, warped. So what I'm going to do... put a little screw here to act as a spacer because that's the width that I want it to be. Now I'm going to screw this end in by just forcing these boards together and screwing. Once I get these two set, then I can remove this, do the other side, and then screw the middle in. I'd really burn this one in in order to drop this board. You can see here. Let's see if I can do the same. I think that worked. Chances are real good. 
Okay, that screw popped out the other side just a little bit. So when I'm done, when this board cures and the glue is doing its thing, I just need to remember to back that screw up just a little bit. All right, so now that I've got that, I can loosen this guy, pull up my spacer. These boards are now evenly spaced and I still have that one in the middle. Let me do the same thing over here. Now we have both ends evenly spaced. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use that to close this gap from being two finger widths to just uh, screw it. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the middle brace in to make sure that the warps aren't like this. So I still have those screws in from where I put them before. I went ahead and dropped this screw in, but you can see here, this one is a little too tight. So the remedy for that is going to be, I'm just gonna screw, screw in. You should see that open up. Now we have a little bit of a gap. So now uh, that will suffice. We've got room for rainwater when it hits this table to still fall through and not collect there. Outside, middle, outside. The middle I just eyeballed. You could decide to be anal and measure five feet exactly, but um, these two I do want to measure and I want to go two feet in. So this is a 10 foot table, two feet here, two feet there is a total of four feet, which means that the legs are supporting this as if it's a six foot table. Um, so two feet is going to be cantilevered on the outside, um, which is to say that if you were to sit down in this section over here, you've got eight feet of board and table over here that are acting as a counterbalance. So unless you're like a huge dude sitting at the table all by himself, this is gonna be no problem. We have our tabletop done, now it's time to build the legs. So this is the measurement I used. Um, I went with a 20 degree angle, and then you just set this on there so that that is that top part is even and then trace the line and then i went 34 inches did the same thing over here i'm gonna make those two cuts and we use that as my template i'm gonna make three more just exactly like this this is a 12 foot piece of treated um, i initially used a 10 footer but i feel like that table sat just a little bit too low it was worth the extra three or four bucks to get this 12 footer um, and then that will give me the four um, treated for ground contact then I'm gonna use this 10 foot piece I'm just gonna cut that right in half use one of the five foot sections for one I'm set of legs the other five foot section for Wait. the other legs now conveniently I already have this board cut here All I need to do is go down 34 and an eighth, make my little gizmo. Got my four legs, all the same length, all the same angle, ready to rock and roll. When you're making the legs, you wanna make sure that the height from the ground is the same for uh, both sides. That's gonna make sure that this board is level. And then likewise, that the height from the top is the same and that we're flush up here. So I went ahead and just, I set these boards on here. That makes them flat. Um, so right now we're looking at 12 inches um, vertical and over here, and I just kind of eyeballed it, we're at 12. So my eyeball was pretty good. But here we're at 14, which means over here, I bet we're also at 14. So I wanna scooch this thing down, otherwise um, like little kids are gonna have a hard time climbing up onto this and you're not gonna have as much leg room right here. So let's go ahead and bump this down to either 12 and a half or 13 inches. Same thing over here and then we'll check 
the uh, the bench length on either side. It looks just at an eyeball. This side is going to be shorter. This side's a little bit longer, so we want to make that even as well. All right, so now I have the height at 13 inches from here to here, 13 from here to here. And again, I'm going vertical, not uh, with the legs. Then, I want to make sure that this is centered, so I'm at 16 over here. And over here, 15 and a half. That's pretty darn close. Just going to give that a little love tap. I drew some lines, so I'm just going to make sure that my board is lined up with those pencil marks since I already set my vertical height. Okay, so that should put us at 16 over here. And 15 and a half over here. All right, I can tap this back and forth, but that's within a half inch. That's gonna be close enough for a picnic table. First couple picnic tables that I built, I did bolts, which are cheaper and probably arguably the strongest option. But the problem with a bolt is that um, the bolt sticks out like you would bump your leg into it when you sat down at the table. And so I had to countersink it in order to get it straight, and now you're stripping away the wood. Do yourself a favor, buy a box of these. Um, these lock lines, these are two and seven eighths inch. So it doesn't go all the way through um, and pop out the other side. It's just gonna bury itself. They're um, replaces lag screws, so arguably it's just as strong, but saves a ton of time. Now we're just going to assemble it in place, because that's way easier than trying to carry it with two people afterwards. So I was able to carry this by myself. It's not easy, but if you carry it with like one hand on either side, you can carry it with one person. Here's what the finished underside looks like. Um, so we've got a two by three supporting the outside of the boards just so that they don't warp and bend. Another two by three here, one splitting the middle. So this one's at two feet, and then these two are pressure treated, so they're ready for ground contact. This is a five foot piece that goes across. This is a two by three that I cut at a 45 degree angle. It's two feet long, so I'm gonna come here I'm gonna cut it here at 45 with my blade like that. And then that is the piece that supports there. So that gives it strength from side to side this way. To make the benches, you simply take two of these 10 footers, put one piece up here in the middle. Um, and then here on the ends, I just like to get fancy. You don't wanna like stub your knee running into this. So I just shave off the corners and then I went ahead and um, miter cut. I just did it free-handed with my saw um, at a 45, but miter cut these. So one on the end, one in the middle, one on the end. Then we're gonna flip this board over, put it just like, so it's hanging a knuckle over here, right, from that board. And then we're just going to drop four screws in along here. That'll scoot over about like that. Four screws over there. Boom, boom. It's attached. It's done. And boom. There you go. Picnic table designed to seat 10 people. Maybe more if you got little bottoms sitting on that. Hey, I hope that this video is a blessing to you and that you are able to then go ahead and crank out your own huge size table. Um, hope that that just brings a lot of delight and many great memories and meals to your house. Hey, comment down below if you have great ideas or tips on how to build a picnic table. In the meantime, click that subscribe button and turn on notifications for more great updates from Spirit He's of a Handyman. Got the Spirit of a Handyman.